Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new to this series, we are indoor growing using hydroponics in particular, and this is an absolute beginner's guide to growing veggies indoors. So you guys obviously know the cost of veggies, whether that be leafy greens or herbs or whatever you do, it's gone up. It's gone up, especially here in Canada. It's gotten pretty high. So this is going to save you some bucks, and it actually is relatively quick in producing you produce. So this is video three of I don't even know how many it's gonna end up being where we talk about hydroponics. So the first video, we went to the store, we went to PB Mart and we looked through all the different products there, what you need, why you would choose it, that sort of thing. The second video, we brought some products home, we set them up and we went through the pros and cons of both. This video, we're gonna be talking about seed starting, selecting the seeds you want to start with, and then determining what medium you want to grow in. Let's get started. Because I'm doing this series, you know, not quickly, but I wanna get you guys started and I wanna be in real time with you guys as you're doing this with me, I have decided to go with leafy greens and herbs. That's what we're gonna do this round. Now keep in mind that root farm system that I showed you in the second video, it can do a full-blown tomato, it can do a full-blown pepper plant, whatever you need, as long as you have the right lighting and you have the right space. So don't hesitate from starting with those, but in order for me to show you start to finish what this looks like, I do need things to turn around just a little bit quicker than the 90 days that a tomato or a pepper plant may need. So we are gonna go with some grow shorter growing season crops, but nonetheless, cash crops because we all know herbs for a tiny little bundle is like five dollars so definitely gonna save us some money plus lettuce right now massive listeria outbreak so it's a huge benefit because we're not going to get listeria in our homegrown lettuce that we are growing here today so these are the packets you choose the package you go with is completely up to you you can grow anything you want so long as it fits in the container so remember the root farm system any plant you desire can be grown in it you just don't want to overcrowd said plant and then the jiffy hydro system you do want to go with something a little bit smaller not so top heavy so you would have to stick with a leafy green or a herb in this case or house plants in another scenario so there is no special way to do this you could soak these seeds if you wanted to technically it would help with germination just a little bit but these are really tiny seeds like i'm talking itsy bitsy so there's really no benefit to soaking these because it's going to be not worth your time it's going to be an absolute nightmare if they get too wet for things like beans corn peas that sort go ahead but these we're not going to pre-soak we are simply just going to set them aside and discuss soil so here we can see uh, quite a few products, all of which I uh, picked up at PB Mart. We have our root farm here. We have our Jiffy pellet, and this came off, is off of the root farm hydro system. That's what this is here. And then what else do we have? Oh, and then just regular potting soil we could use as well. Now, if you choose to use regular potting soil and then pack it into this container here, there is something to keep in mind. You want to use seed starter mix reason for this it's because potting soil mix has quite a bit of perlite in it and perlite likes to float and if you're putting it in a hydro system you're going to notice a lot of your perlite is going to end up kind of in your hydro system clogging things up uh, things of that nature and you want to avoid that if possible so try to go with the seed starter packs whenever it is applicable. Now with both the root farm and the Jiffy Pods, we're using a peat-based soil. And the peat-based soil is, it is acidic to a point. And so it actually does help prevent uh, both fungal, bacterial, seed rot. You know, when you end up with a seedling and it just kind of flops over on you and it, it looks like it suddenly died, dampening off is what we call that. This will help prevent it if we use a peat-based soil. There is another method to help prevent this, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But with the Jiffy pods here, now these are the big ones, and I, I really shouldn't have gotten the big ones to show you. I should have gotten the smaller ones, but these are the giant ones. You can get tinier ones here um, at PB Mart, but these are the big guys. And so these are just compressed little bricks, and when we add water to this, it expands quite a bit and we'll show you what that looks like. But it has a tiny little hole in the top and you just simply place your seeds in that area. The key here is if you are using this in the root farm system, you do want it to fit inside of this container. Because this does expand, this will not fit in this container. However, this is a great size 
for seed starting in the Jiffy Hydro system. And it's really convenient because it has this wonderful netting on it that's gonna help to keep all the soil in place. So we can start our seeds in this uh, peat pod and then we can simply transfer the peat pod directly into the Jiffy Hydro system with that wonderful pumice rock that we have available to us. We just have to dig a small hole. We don't have to remove the netting at all. So if you decided to get the Jiffy Hydro system, then you're gonna wanna get the Jiffy pods here because these are going to be the ideal system that won't clog up the water. You're not gonna have a whole bunch of floaties in the water, that sort of thing. So this is ideal for that case. Now the other method is the root farm system. So there is a ton of pods in here. And you're probably thinking I don't need that many and you don't, but uh, they will store just fine. There's 50 in here and you'll have no problems uh, just throwing these in the closet and using them for later. This is what the root farm pods look like. They are peat based, but they do feel and look very similar to sponge, but they are peat based and I'm not gonna lie, I opened up the pack and it's got like this wonderful sealant on it so it doesn't dry out, which is really, really important, you guys. If you are using these um, and you let them dry out too much, they'll be a little bit of a nightmare to rehydrate. They'll rehydrate, but it'll take a little time. So when I open this up, I immediately just smelt the soil. If you guys know what, like, you know what I mean. When you open up like a fresh thing of potting soil, I immediately miss spring and summer. I was like, oh, it's minus 34 out, but this smells, this smells like summer. I do not regret my decision to start growing indoors. I will say that much. This smells wonderful. So I love it. Maybe this is just a soil scientist thing. Maybe just soil scientists sniff dirt. So this is what this looks like here. And so what you want to do is you can do, do one of two things. You can remove these and place them directly into these trays here. And then you just place them in a dish and you keep them relatively moist. You don't want to put these right into that. You can, you can by all means, put it directly into the root farm system. But I like to keep them separate just for a tiny period of time until you know what's up and what your plants are going to do or what they choose to do. So this is going to just simply go right into the pod that we have on there. And you can see it's a little bit loose in there. Do not stress out about that whatsoever. I'm gonna get some of these started. I'm gonna clear this off and then we're gonna talk about planting and exactly how we do that. Okay, so we are ready to put our plants into a container. So you wanna get a dish whether this be an actual planting tray, whatever the case is, whatever you in-house, it doesn't have to be special. And you're gonna wanna put your new seed starter into the pot. Now I'm gonna put one Jiffy pot in here and four of the root farm. I'm gonna do four root farm um, herbs in the root farm. And I'm gonna do one of the taste setter, kinda of looks like a butter crunch lettuce, in the big guy here. So what you wanna get is some nice hot water. This is boiling hot, it is boiling hot. There's a reason for this. This helps to really sterilize the system. So when we use boiling hot water, we will prevent mold and we will kill off anything that may cause dampening off, which is very, very important. So I'm just gonna pour this into the bottom of the pot here. And what ends up happening when we do this is we end up with something called capillary action. So via capillary action, the water is going to move up into the soil system of our pot. And that's essentially what gets the water to work again, or gets the, yeah, the water to work against gravity in our soil systems. It also inherently helps the Jiffy pod to expand much, much quicker, I do find. Now, you may be able to see the steam coming off the camera. You don't wanna plant your seeds in there yet. You do not want to burn your seeds. Obviously, that is important. But what this is going to do is as these are soaking and saturating is ultimately, it's gonna give a really nice warm environment, which is key when we germinate. So once this has completely saturated the soil, I'm going to dump out the excess. Now, what you may choose to do is you may choose to use a, a clear top to really help hold that moisture in, at least until the plant germinates. Now, this will help exponentially both keep the heat in and the moisture up, which will result in a little bit faster germination times and a little bit higher success. Now, I have here, I believe the brand I like, it's called Sun Blaster. This is the brand I really like. And the reason for this is they do cost a little bit more money, but if you're getting into gardening, it's worth the investment. Not only will these last because they're like 
actual heavy duty plastic. They're not like the flimsy stuff. This is pretty heavy duty stuff. They won't crack on you, but they also have these wonderful little vents on the side that allow the steam or any excess moisture to escape through the top. So if you're noticing that your soil seems a little bit too moist, you're noticing mold buildup, that sort of thing, all you do is you just crack the vent to whatever level you want, all the way, part way, whatever the case is, and it'll help get rid of that excess moisture while still providing that much needed moisture that you do need. Now this is the reason why we do keep our plants separate from the hydroponic system just to begin with is that added moisture. Now, if you're able to help keep the humidity up in the actual root farm system, because you have like a grow tent or you have an enclosed system or your house maybe isn't very dry, maybe your house is relatively humid, then of course, by all means, skip the, the plastic tray bit and then just utilize that grow tent. Now with my grow system, I do have a tent, like an actual grow tent. You can see one right here behind me. It's not necessary by any means to grow indoors or hydroponically. It's just something I have and that I am utilizing because my house is very dry. I am in Saskatchewan. It is very, very dry here and my home suffers the consequences of that. So if I chose to start scenes, they either have to be done in the grow tent or with the lid here. And my hydro system is in a larger grow tent in the basement, which is where these guys are gonna start off. So I'm gonna try to start seeds without the actual lid itself. But if you don't have that available to you, be sure to use the lid. Now you're probably wondering, how much of each seed do you put per pod? And the lucky number I find when starting any seed is three. Three is like your, you have insurance for sure that the plant is going to grow. Keep in mind, we are going to be cutting these back and we'll get into what that looks like over time, but you don't want a ton of plants growing in a tiny pod. And if you can keep it to one stem per, per pod, it's gonna be a huge lifesaver. So I'm gonna count out my seeds and I'm just simply going to drop them in these holes here and it's done. If you end up putting more than three seeds per pod, there's nothing wrong with that. But keep in mind, you will have to pinch back some of the seeds because it's just simply impossible to keep all of these alive in our grow system. If you can also obviously label <laughs> what plants are what, especially if you're a new grower and you're unsure which ones are meant to go where, label, 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 label. I always forget to label. And I'm not gonna label this time either, but I can tell apart which ones are which. The only one I might have troubles with at first is gonna be between oregano and thyme, but I'm gonna be able to sniff it out. I'm always like blown away by how small seeds can be. It's just crazy. You're guesstimating as to whether or not you're gonna get it in this little, area that they have marked out here but yeah so because you're gonna have these under grow lights you don't have to push the peat back on this it's not gonna actually let you because it's it is a sponge but because there's quite a bit of light in the grow system in general the light is going to penetrate into the hole and you'll be just fine because it's not the soil's not going to fall in on the seed so photosensitive plants such as lettuce that do need some sort of sunlight in order to trigger the growth cycle will be just fine i mean if you're doing tomatoes or something larger you're going to keep the exact same size pod regardless and i know you're probably thinking oh my gosh that's super tiny but it, it'll be fine, I promise. Now what I might do, I might do two basil plants instead. You guys have to let me know in the comments down below what you are choosing to do this year for your indoor grow systems. If this is your first year or what year you're in of this, I would be interested to know. Okay, so these are all done, the little uh, root farm ones. Now for the jiffy ones, I just do like a simple little fluff. I do you know, barely a hole because we're doing lettuce in this. So we do want to keep it relatively close to the surface. Whenever in doubt, when it comes to depth, just simply read the back of the pack. Okay, we are completed. I'm going to put these guys under grow lights, very important. And I'm going to keep my grow lights nice and close. They are going to be in a grow tent in general. So they are going to have a higher level of heat. If you can provide a heat mat or um, just put them over a register with a plastic top on, you're gonna notice your germination rates are just a little bit quicker. And other than that, you're done. The next episode, we are talking about lighting though. So it is gonna be a little bit more nerdy, a little bit more intense, where we talk about time, distance, all that sort of thing. So I will see you guys in the next video.